Well, David Cameron says he is content with the reception he's received so far in his talks on reforming or trying to reform the European Union. He was attending a summit in Belgium. More talks are scheduled with fellow leaders from Spain, Finland, Romania and Cyprus. Mr Cameron is seeking support for his plan to renegotiate the terms of Britain's membership before holding uh, a referendum. Mr Cameron needs to be straight in his negotiations, according to one former EU commissioner who urged him to make a pro-EU case to British voters. The advice came from Pascal Lamy, who is also a former head of the World Trade Organization and a very, very experienced observer of these things. And I'm pleased to say that Mr Lamy is in our Paris studio for us now. Thank you so much for joining us. It's, uh, it's good to have you with us. Um, your advice to Mr Cameron, or at least your suggestion that he be straight, is that, is that based on the fact that in the past maybe dealings haven't been as straight as they might have been? Yeah, that's a, that's a nice way of uh, saying it. Uh, what I believe is that uh, other EU leaders are perfectly ready to uh, listen to the British uh, point that EU needs reforms, at least some reforms. I think there is goodwill around the table of the European Council on this. Uh, but I also think that, in a way, the price for that is for uh, David Cameron and the campaigners uh, to reconstruct what we haven't seen for quite a lot of time in your country, which is a nice, attractive, pro-European narrative. That would be based, Mr. Lamy, wouldn't it, on what he is able to produce from these negotiations. And there is a lot of um, disagreement on this. Some Conservative politicians in the UK are quite clear. They think that the changes he might be able to get would be minimal. Uh, what is your view on what he might be able to negotiate? I think, uh, as far as I understand, uh, the, the main problem Britain has uh, now is uh, the fact that other European countries within the Eurozone will very likely have to integrate more. And as, by the way, uh, David Cameron puts it, uh, uh, and I think he expresses in doing, saying that, the, the British view, the British do not want to be socked into some sort of uh, United States of Europe. So he wants guarantees that if there is a federal train somewhere, and probably within the Eurozone, uh, Britain won't be a part of that federal train. That's, I think, something they want to be clear. On the other side, and this is where there is also a margin of negotiation, uh, I think uh, uh, the British and the British government wants to make sure that whatever more federal integration will happen within the Eurozone will not damage UK's interest in the European Union. So, and that's, for instance, what's happened with the banking union, and it worked. The banking union has integrated France, Germany, Spain, Italy, more into a single European set of disciplines and surveillance, not the British, but the British have got a guarantee that whatever they want to participate, because they believe it's good for them, will remain available. So there is a range there. Whether this will uh, result in modification of EU treaties, I'm not sure. If David Cameron wants to hold his referendum by the end of 2016, there is no time for a proper modification, ratification of treaty by others. But there are formulas like protocols, which we have and, experienced and, and, in the past, and which can provide the necessary guarantees to the British. OK, and, and could the necessary guarantees in the context you just explained there also apply, for example, to that crucial issue of freedom of movement, given the sensitivity in some quarters in the UK to deal with uh, immigration and the fact that that is perceived to be one of the areas which the EU has, um, you know, has made a contribution to? Uh, I think it clearly is a problem for the Eurosceptics or the anti-Europeans in, uh, in uh, Britain, but on this, and this is a job of the yes campaigners, you have to make a clear distinction between the fact that others will not accept to change a fundamental principle with it that EU citizens, citizens from the members of the Union, have a right to free circulation within the European Union, and the problem of what are the social benefits 
uh, which uh, immigrants coming from other than EU countries have within the European Union. Now, I know it's, it's a bit complex, and, you know, the moment it becomes a bit complex, then populists uh, have sort of the easy solution, yaka faucon, as we say in French, but <laughs> these are different problems, and I believe they can be accommodated without infringing, which other European countries will, will refuse to do, this principle that within the European Union there is a single space where EU citizens can move freely. Uh, just a broader point, if I may, to, to finish on, Mr. Lamy. What is the perception of the British position in other parts of the EU right now? Um, is it seen to be a bit tiresome? Is it seen to be a bit irritating? Um, or is there general sympathy or even understanding with what Mr. Cameron is trying to do? I think there's a bit of both. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, people in uh, other than uh, UK, European countries saying, uh, you know, the Brits have always been a pain in the ass. If they want to leave, let them go, uh, life will be easier. But it's, it's a tiny little minority. Most of the other Europeans, for various reasons, including historical reasons, including the fact that they believe that Britain is part of the European civilization, that integrating Europe is to promote and defend in the future specific European values, the UK being part of that, and that's without any doubt whether you get religion, philosophy, history, ideas, most of the people would consider that UK leaving Europe would be a, a big problem for Europe. It would be a loss of credibility, which is a loss of legitimacy for this European integration progress. So I think overall the other Europeans are willing to show that they understand the British problem and they will want to help Cameron winning his referendum. Pascal Lamy, good to talk to you and uh, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. My pleasure. Pascal Lamy there in Paris is the former head of the World Trade Organization, former EU Commissioner too.